Hi, I'm Sam Ferris with Sony Electronics, and today I'm going to show you how to create your own five camera multicam live stream to your favorite social media platform like Facebook, YouTube, or Vimeo. And you'll be able to record at the same time with the MCX 500 multicam live producer. Check it out. Reporting to you live from Los Angeles, California, directly to Facebook. Simple live streaming from Sony. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect five cameras to the MCX 500 Multicam Live Producer. Everything from a small Sony RX0 Mark II, Sony A7R Mark III. So here we're using the Sony Venice as the main camera. Thanks to my friends at Zeiss for letting me try out these cool Supreme Primes. And here we have the Z90 capturing behind the scenes. I'm gonna take you on an exclusive behind the scenes look at my pop-up studio. So welcome to my garage. Check it out. This is what I have going on. It's really just a simple setup. Thanks to my friends at Mo Richardson and also Light Panels for giving me light in my dark garage. So to get started, we first have to connect our laptop, tablet, or phone to the MCX500 so that we can input the stream settings. So first, you want to go to Utility, and then select Network, and go to Direct, and hit Connect. Now you're going to see that the IP address is 192.168.0.1. Open Network and Internal Settings. Go to Ethernet, Change Adapter Options, right-click and hit properties. So now all you have to do is select internet protocol version 4 TCP IPv4 and select properties. Select use the following IP address and enter the first three sets of numbers from your switcher 192.168.0 and then for the last set of numbers you can create anything from 2 to 254. So I'll just go ahead and put number 22 there and for the subnet mask it auto populates for 255.255.255.0. But then we hit OK, close, and our connection to the MCX500 is established. Now open up any browser and type in the IP address of the MCX500. If you haven't created a password yet, it's going to ask you to do so. If you have, like I have, you're just going to be able to log right in. I can also control the MCX500 wirelessly using my cell phone or a tablet by having a wireless router. So first, connect the wireless router to your PC UI interface on the back of the MCX500. Then go to Utility, select Network, make sure you select LAN and hit Connect. Once you do that, it'll show you the IP address of the MCX500 connected to the wireless router. Now, let's connect the wireless router to our cell phone. So first thing you want to do is go to your settings, select the wireless router as your Wi-Fi connection, and of course put in the password if you haven't already put it in, and now we're connected. Go back to your browser and connect it to the IP address that's set up. So here, we'll put the password. If you haven't set one up already, it'll ask you to set one up. I can cut, do transitions, all from my cell phone. I can control my audio, select which inputs I want. There you go. And now, I'm selecting my inputs. I can add my logo, my title, and I could even stop recording. What's cool is you can also control it with your iPad. And both devices offer me same access. So I go ahead, switch over here, and then go back to seeing what it looks like. You can see that they both have the same IP address. Let me just zoom in using my RM30BP, and you can see they both have the same IP address there. Now that I have my tablet connected, it's real easy to go ahead and set up 
my stream keys. I can go into streaming, copy and paste my URL for Facebook and for YouTube. And on profile three, I can even set that up for Vimeo or Twitch or any other. And for streaming, you want to make sure that you're connecting an Ethernet cable to the streaming input and that you have a stable connection before going live. First, we need to go to Facebook and get our streaming information. So click on create a post, go to more, select live video, and then it takes you to Facebook Live Producer. Now here you have three options. You can either use a stream key, which is what we're gonna do, use your camera on your computer, or use a paired encoder, which would be a software encoder. We're using a hardware encoder with the MCX500, which means you don't need a computer to stream. So go ahead and copy the stream server URL and then paste it into your notepad because then you can use it for later if you need to. Okay, then go to copy stream key or stream name, which is basically the password to stream to your Facebook. So make sure you don't share that stream key with anyone because then they can stream directly to your Facebook. Okay, and then copy that and paste it into your Facebook Live information. So now that we have our URL and stream key from Facebook, all we need to do is copy and paste this information back into the MCX500 remote controller. Select Setup, go to Streaming, and find the profile that says Facebook. Now, let's open up our notepad and copy and paste the information. And grab the stream key or stream name, which is basically the password to stream to Facebook, and hit set. And you're all set. Now let's go back to the MCX500 and hit start streaming. So now, back to the MCX500, hit streaming, and this time, select Facebook. Hit start. We want to select go live. Reporting to you live from Los Angeles, California, directly to Facebook. Let's go get the information that we need so we can stream live to YouTube. Click go live. And here it'll ask you whether you want to create a new stream or reuse your previous settings. Let's create a new stream. Let's call it MCX 500 live stream how to. And here you select whether you want it to go public, anyone can search and view, or only someone with a link can view is unlisted and private only you can view. I like using unlisted, that way I can share the link with only those the people that I want to see my video. And then here we can add description. How to multicam stream. And then you select what type of video it is, how to, schedule for later, upload a custom thumbnail. Now here, you want to make sure that you select, no, it's not made for kids. Otherwise, things like comments or features that you also would like to use in YouTube are not available. Then you would select, no, it's not for kids. And then select create stream. In order to use the same stream key, you can also create your own stream key. So let's go ahead and name that. Then you can select your bit rate here. You can do 4K, 1080p. Since our switcher is only 1080p, we'll stay at 1080p. And then we'll go enable 60 frames second, create. Now, find your stream key. MCX500 stream now. You have your persistent stream key and that you can always use the same stream key to YouTube Live. So copy that, put it in your notepad, then copy the stream URL, put that in your notepad, and save. Now, let's go back to the MCX500 remote controller and input this information. And back at our MCX500, we go to Setup, select Streaming, go to YouTube, open up our notepad, and just copy and paste the information that we got for stream name, as well as our stream URL. And then hit set. And you're ready to go. Now let's go back to our MCX500 and hit start streaming. So back at the MCX500, we now go to streaming. We can select YouTube. And then we hit start. 
back on the computer side, it looks like we're ready to go live. So click go live. And we are going live. So let's take a closer look at the MCX500 Multicam Live Producer. So basically, what you can see here is that I'm recording and streaming simultaneously. Here are my audio channels, which I can use to connect my audio from the camera or input audio through my line input as a clean audio signal, either from a mixing console or from any audio source. And here you can see my multi-viewer showing me all four cameras that I have connected. But wait a minute, I said something about showing five cameras, right? So how do I get to see my five cameras? Well, first I have to go back to my MCX 500 and then select my assign button, which will be either HDMI or SDI. So now once I select HDMI, I actually have my A7R connected. When I select SDI, I have my Venice connected. So let me show you what that looks like in a side by side by hitting effect. I can actually use a side by side image. So here, I can show you what it looks like. So let's set up my assignable button from three to HDMI. Now you see that my third input, which is the one we're seeing on the right hand side, switched to my A7R. So now I'm using the A7R Mark III as one of my video inputs. So the MCX500 is also a five channel audio mixer. So over here, I have the ability to control all of my four inputs from my camera audio independently or simultaneously, as well as a line input. So for my line input, if I'm shooting a concert or a live event, I can actually have those XLR or quarter inch cables going into the MCX500 to record a clean audio signal. Now I can also connect it to my phone if I want to play some background music. So all I need is an audio cable that goes directly to my phone and a Y cable split on the other side going to my right and left channels. And I can just hook those up the back of the MCX 500 line input. So now that I have my phone connected to my line input on my MCX 500, I can play some music from my phone as background music. Gotta love you some Mozart. My audio is coming from the Sony UWPD wireless lavalier that's connected to my Z90 via the MI shoe, which means that my power comes directly from the camera's batteries and I don't need to use batteries in the receiver. So here we have background and effects. Background basically allows you to transition between one shot and another. And I can choose different types of transitions as well. Select the effect button. And now we're able to do side by side. You can also do picture in picture or different variations of your side by sides. You can even do chroma key. So if I had a green screen set up, I could even do chroma key using the MCX 500 and no additional software. So for those of you who want to do remote learning or webinars, you can actually connect your computer as one of your video sources. And that way I can show you diagrams and do a picture in picture. So this is a typical MCX 500 diagram. So we have the MCX 500 here connected to a secondary laptop which allows me to do my titling. My SD card is recording my program and via HDMI or SDI, I can go to a program projector or TV or monitor, as well as my multi-view monitor, which is via HDMI. I can connect up to eight cameras right here. You can see four of them. One of them is a robotic camera via HDMI. The other one are the three cameras that can be SDI or HDMI connected to a remote controller, which I'll show you later on. And all you need is an Ethernet LAN cable to go directly to the MCX 500 and connect to either a router or a 4G LTE device, which allows you to connect via cable to get to the internet and do your streaming without through the use of a computer.
So since I'm doing this multi-cam live production by myself, it's really handy to have cool products like this RM30BP that can allows me to control up to three cameras simultaneously as well as independently. So let's take a look at how I can control my zoom and be able to see the RM30BP closer up. So over here, you can see that I can control three cameras simultaneously, as well as control things like iris, zoom, focus, as well as hit start on all cameras simultaneously. Since only two of my cameras have a LAN connection, I can only control up to two of my five cameras. However, watch how I can control simultaneously both cameras when I show you a split screen of both cameras at the same time. So let's go here, and now, you can see that when I zoom in on one, I also zoom in on the other. And I can also control my iris on both simultaneously. So you can control simultaneously or independently. Up to three cameras using a LAN connection that can go up to 50 meters for each camera or 100 meters for one-to-one -one control. Another cool option using my RM30BP in conjunction with the MCX500 is that I have this cable that is an audio cable and I can connect to the back of the RM30BP as well as connecting to the back of the MCX500. Once I have that connection established, I can now see tally on my LCD screens for the cameras that can allow tally functionality. Here's a list of the cameras that currently work with the tally function with the RM30BP and the MCX500. Now, if I'm the person in front of the camera, I know exactly where to look because I see a red border around my LCD screen. And that red border tells me that that's the camera that's going live. Now, if it's a green border, I'll know that that's the second camera that's queued up to go live. So I can actually find out which camera is recording me by looking at the LCD screen. Now, if I'm the camera guy and I'm working on the other side, I also will know when my camera is being used in the program. So now I'm looking at this camera. When I hit cut, the red border switches to the other camera. Pretty cool functionality, especially if you're working by yourself. So as you can see, you can connect any camera with an HDMI, SDI, video component output. And you can even use this fancy little USB-C to HDMI cable to connect your cell phone as one of the video inputs. So now I have connected my Xperia 1 cell phone via USB-C to HDMI into the MCX500 switcher. So let's say that I wanna to connect to this cool Cinema Pro app that comes with the camera that's powered by Cine Alta. Now, I know having a Venice for my live stream is a luxury, but my team and I from the DMPC are actually creating some really cool training videos that'll be coming out soon on SonyCine.com. So stay tuned to SonyCine.com. And there you have it. Simple live streaming from Sony. Thanks so much for your time and keep creating.